You call us Makwere Kwere, foreigner, Lindova, but we are not all of that. We are hustlers. We are here to hustle. This thing of deporting us is a waste of time because you deport us today and we come back today. It's a waste of resources, waste of money, waste of energy. Instead of deporting us, why can't you take that money and help orphan kids? There are people who can afford school fees in South Africa. There are kids who are suffering. Why don't you use that money to help them? Instead of feeding people in Lindela, millions of foreigners are full in Lindela, eating South African food, wasting South African money. Petrol to deport them almost every day, but they keep on coming back. We keep on coming back. I was deported in 2013, and I came back at the very same day. So, <laughs> this is just absurd. I don't know why you are in a foreign land and you feel so entitled that you have the audacity to just come out in public and vomit nonsense. I don't know what some people smoke really. Never respect. Moba if we put his food be said. That is something I call will be said. I see what is our Saba Mara Saba respect. Go to Intabayans. I also send us the Guinness Katana. If we are you come to twin. Moba if we send to twin. Funnel of Sayuni paper. The court is signed. Few is cut. So what to be done again. This issue of illegal immigrants in South Africa is getting out of hand. And it puzzles me when I see people like these ones feeling entitled that they must be in South Africa. I've never seen people who fight to be in a country where they are not needed. I've never seen people who are willing to do anything to denounce their country and just be in South Africa. Yeah, especially the ones from Zimbabwe. I'm sure this guy here is from Zimbabwe. And this is the mindset of very many Zimbabweans in South Africa. Like you are deported today, tomorrow you are back. You are just too stubborn. It means you don't follow the law. You want a lawless society. You want to do whatever you want. And this one... <laughs> If this is what they are actually doing, I don't know how this issue of illegal immigration in South Africa will be solved. Five children have died in Soweto over the weekend. It is alleged that three of them became unwell after eating snacks from local spaza shops. The families are trying to come to terms with their losses. Zinigo Mklaba joins us now live from Soweto. Zinigo, very good afternoon to you. Very concerning. Five children in one weekend. Um, we know that the issue of spaza shops and children buying snacks, especially in townships, has been one that the conversation has gone on for quite some time. Why are we not finding solutions and what exactly happened? happened in the township of Naledi? I don't want to speculate because I'm told that investigation is ongoing, but these puzzle shops in South Africa are mostly operated by foreign nationals. So I don't know why these people feel like they can sell goods that are not fit for human consumption to our fellow brothers and sisters in South Africa. Now see what it has cost. I don't know whether South Africa has a Bureau of Standards which has to satisfy these goods before they are sold to the general public. Because it doesn't make sense that there are products in the market which are being sold to the general public and yet they are not fit for human consumption. Today, or rather on Sunday, it was these five kids. It happened in Soweto, in a township called Naledi. Tomorrow, it could be somewhere in Joburg, or somewhere in Pretoria, or somewhere in Durban, or somewhere else. So, if this is what these illegal immigrants go to do in South Africa, 
why can't they be deported? This is not xenophobic at all. I'll keep on singing this until people actually understand me. It's not xenophobia when foreign nationals who are in South Africa illegally and committing crime are deported back to their countries. How is it xenophobic? You tell me how this is xenophobic. These were just very innocent five kids. And now they are no more. My deepest condolences to the families that lost their loved ones. No. I, I, solutions. 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 We need to change the constitution, the There's constitution of this country. The constitution of this country needs to say a South African or a citizen, not everyone. <laughs> because people are, are, are hijacking buildings, they are called everyone. Mm. Anyone can come in here. And we need civil law actions against those people who are encouraging foreigners to come to our country and where police and soldiers are failing to protect our people from illegal foreigners we need to sue the department of foreign affairs the department of defense the department of police in uh, for damages yeah, those okay. victims before you've been killed your family is killed by foreigners we need to sue the okay government. so we must foreign people and this is an aspect that that is being neglected Please whenever people talk about foreigners. Yeah. I have skills that I have brought into this country. Mm -hmm. You have skills that you have brought into this country. True. When I was in the medical fraternity, the number of doctors who are foreign, who have helped to advance this country in the healthcare uh, uh, sector, is, is, is such a, a, a high number that due recognition needs to be given mm, mm. to the contributions that have been made by foreigners. True. But it's funny that when we want votes from local South Africans, how we vilify the very people who have helped um, enhance, enhance and build yeah. 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 this country to levels that comparable to other African nations, you cannot compare. And that's an aspect that always is neglected. No, it's neglected. It's neglected. I, I keep saying that I wish if people would understand the story of South Africa and the ruling party tell the truth as to the contributions of all foreigners during that very particular apartheid regime, mm. I think that people will have a clear understanding. And I'm not saying worship, worship foreigners because sometimes sure. people are like, oh, so you guys want us to worship you guys. And sure. so, mm. so because you help us, you want to come and kill us. Mm. Mm. Come down. Mm. You see, you're just being too emotional. Like, let's come down. We're just yeah. saying, tell the story. Like we say, like they currently say in the industry, give the flower to the flower is due. Mm. Okay. Mm. Foreigners have contributed. Mm. Indeed. And I even say, point blank, I think I remember I was saying to somebody, that I think it was even my wife and I. Yeah. And we were talking about Grimstone, for instance. We're like, if I, I, I don't have a problem with all the name change that is currently happening. I think now they've changed William Nicole to Winnie Madikisela, okay. whatever name they call that place. Mm -hmm. As much as, yes, that is happening, that's good. But we also need to understand that the white also contributed to the development of this very particular country. Right. Am I going to, am I approving the fact that um, what the white did to South Africa, that we should forget it? No. But there are genuine whites who contributed to the system of this very particular country. Yes, the apartheid system may be demonic, and I do not support of it. Hear me? I do not support of it. But there are systems that they have built that up till now is still upholding the economy. For sure. So because of that, you can't throw the baby and the water simply. I mean, you can't throw the water, you no, know, the baby away because the water is dirty. Yeah. How then do we begin to clean all these things is what we need to be talking about. Mm. I was saying to somebody mm. already, the reason why mm. people are hitting on mm. us in code the black foreigners is because we've literally not sat with the white guys who perpetrated the crime and looked up at their face and said, you did this to me. Mm. And so because you have not done that, you are attacking the closest one that you see around you, sure. which is so much your color. Yeah. But if we give you that very particular access to sit with that with the so-called reconciliation commission, because I tell you, I say reconciliation reconciliation commission that was done by Desmond Tutu. Then that right, time, right. You guys just blow the wound. You didn't heal it. Hmm. You are sitting there looking at somebody who killed your great grandfather, killed your father, killed your mother, killed everybody, and you are saying forgive. Hmm. The woman who is looking at the guy, thinking, I, I, I feel like slapping you. Then tell the lady, go and slap the guy. Maybe that will give you peace. Hmm. So you can't just say no, forgive and forget, and let's move on. No, calm, calm down. As much as all of that is happening, all we are saying is Africans, South Africa. Many of these conversations will be coming. People from South Africa will be on the show. 
they will share their experience. I've seen South Africa who has been hurt by foreigners. Mm -hmm. I have also seen South Africa who has also hurted foreigners. Mm. So it's a two-way thing. These two men, uh, okay, you have the right to state your own opinions. But sometimes I just wonder why somebody has to migrate from their own country and then they go to South Africa to offer these skills in South Africa. Why? And you'll find that there is a shortage of maybe doctors in uh, these foreigners' countries. You'll find that there is a shortage of teachers. There is a shortage of uh, skilled laborers. But they are not willing to stay in their home countries and develop their own countries. They just want to run away. Like they don't want to be associated with their roots or their homeland. They just want to be in South Africa. I mean, South Africa is so special that people are willing to do anything for South Africa. Can't you just stay home because you've been trained in your home country? to later on offer service in your own country. But you're there encouraging brain drain and you're very proud of it. That you know, we are bringing skills, we are doing what? There is nothing you are doing as long as your country is still backward and you are there in South Africa feeling entitled that you have to be there. Another thing they stated is about uh, black South Africans turning against black Africans who are illegal immigrants. That they should turn against the white people. What I don't actually understand is that South Africa is a rainbow nation. There are white South Africans there. There are Indians there who are South African. So you want black South Africans to turn against their fellow citizens. These are people who are there legally. They were born there. And you want black South Africans to chase them away. I don't know how some people think. If I say they're racist, I don't know how they'll take it. If we look back, if we trace our history, um, Zimbabweans, Malawians were coming here to mine to build Johannesburg. This is the Johannesburg that now South Africans feels like it's ours, but it was built on the sweat of migrants. We have seen, uh, when I came into South Africa, that was 2002, mm. uh, Midland was not built the way it was built. If you check who was working in the, in the, in the construction industry, it was mig migrants that were coming from another country. Mm. Right now, South Africa is now built. It's now uh, like um, everyone now is attracted mm. to South Africa because it's now, it's now well built. Now we are sitting here and say these people must go home, but we forget what they contributed mm. to, the, to the society. Look at the taxi mm. industry right now. Right. We want to be like to go back to the ground. If you look at the taxi industry right now, how many billions is it contributing to South Africa? Mm. And look at it right now, a South African lives in Soweto, Mm. They live in, 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 in townships, in locations, right? They use buses to go to work. Yeah. Who is going to those taxis that is, that is bringing in billions in South Africa? So you're saying that it's, it's, it's the migrants that work there? It's, uh, can I okay. ask you, so you're saying mm. that South Africa was built by, you know, migrants that were working in the farm. Were this documented or undocumented? Just from your point of view, mm. uh, back in the days, during those times when they were coming in to uh, build the mines, in your perspective, uh, during those control, you know, times. Without knowing that uh, the migrants were, were, were documented by then, mm. I don't have that... Uh, you don't have that information? I don't have that yeah. information. And my sister says that South Africa was built by migrants or immigrants. Fine. <laughs> you build South Africa, right? So let me assume that I want to build a house. So you come, you invite yourself to my construction site. And then you help me build the house. It becomes beautiful. Very nice. You know, as beautiful as South Africa is. <laughs> and then later on, you demand by force that you have to stay in my house just because you helped me build it. And they didn't ask you to help me. You came by yourself. 
and now you feel so entitled that you must have a share of whatever I have because you helped. Yes, you helped. And in good faith, I can say, you know, you can uh, stay here, but you have to behave. But what if I welcome you and you start misbehaving? Will I still welcome you? Not at all. So you can't help me build a house. And then you forcefully demand that you must live there illegally. Every country has its own laws which must be followed. So let's not be irrational and emotional here. Anyway, let's close this chapter by listening to this other clip because I think this young man here is making a lot of sense. So let's listen to him and then we come back. Let me start with saying it's absolute nonsense to say our people are xenophobic. We've lived with so, uh, people from other countries, you know, be it uh, Rhodesia, be it so South Rhodesia, but our people have got the right to object, you know, and we can't have a country which is open, free for all, you know, like they want South Africa to become. When you open our borders in 1990, 94, we thought that we're going to attract people who are going to contribute to our economy, actual scientists, teachers, but instead we are attracting wrong people, criminals, people who are coming here to How are we attracting wrong people? Yeah. We are attracting beggars because our law says that you must attract scarce skills. You can't just enter into Japan if you're not going to contribute something that they do not have. If you're going to play soccer here, you must play it better than Dr. Kumale and Shuz Mushu. Mm -hmm. Don't come and... and, 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 and so and, and, are you saying want... South Africa is not a place that welcomes or accommodates Africa, asylum seekers? South Africa welcomes asylum, asylum seekers, but most of the countries or most of the people who are here, their countries are not in war. There are people who are here to compete, to outwit, to outlast our people. They want the same things that our people are wanting and they let me tell you this uh, when they were free in ghana you mentioned ghana 1957 we never went to ghana four people here go to exile 15 million come here what were they doing all this time from the last 60 years not building their countries so thank you so much for tuning in and hopefully we will be back with another video tomorrow or the day after tomorrow i hope to see you soon